fairly accomplished and beyond Trey, but obviously on the, the defensive end, you look like a veteran, and the offensive end, you look like a freshman today, on the offensive end, you look like a veteran on that end, too. I really think that the, um, the play of the game uh, for us that got us back, we, we were a little skittish, was uh, his dunk. And uh, I'm not sure that you're going to see a better dunk. You can put a different jersey on a kid and say he's from a BCS conference or, or whatever you want. But that dunk, uh, and then the only thing that we want to work with him, and this is honest, is I don't, we don't need all his reactions. In fact, we're going to have a conversation with, with uh, Langston going into the NCAA tournament. We, you don't need all these gyrations. You know what I mean? You know, like they all come up with these special gimmicks for making a three-point shot. Make a three-point shot and get on to the next play. And DeAndre was the same about the dunk. But uh, he was better, much better offensively today at eight assists. And against that pressure, uh, and, and don't take anything, they changed the way they guarded us. Uh, it was much tougher today than it was in Philadelphia when we played that. Right. So you guys did a European trip, right? We did. How much did that help make this come true? Well, here it is. That's a Pope blessed rosary ring. That's what worked. Nope. <laughs> 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 Uh, here's what happened, Len. When we got together in June, there was something different about the group. DeAndre got to campus, and, and it was just different. There was a there was a seriousness of purpose. There was a uh, uh, I, I'll bet that they dreamt about this day, that day. And uh, when we went over there, the thing that was revealed to me was character. The the character of the group. We had two rules: you're not allowed to stay in your room. And number two, if you're out of your room, you have to be with somebody else on your team. And my wife and I would kind of walk around and when it wasn't an organized part of the trip, and we would look up and three guys would be getting pizza together and you'd think, those three guys don't seem to hang out. Or another group over here taking pictures together. Uh, and there was no pain in the trip. Because I'll be honest with you, I was waiting for the first one that complained about the food or you know, the hotels are different, the breakfast is different. We, they were so, they were so, uh, and I say this in the kindest way, they were so childish on the trip and so appreciative of the trip that I knew when I came back, you know what, I just have to get this going in the right direction to come up with the basketball part because the, the character of the team is clear. It's, it's a strong, it's a championship character. Sure. Uh, Coach, uh, last year you seemed uh, occasionally frustrated with Aleel uh, Kansavik. Uh, how, how do you feel about him this year? Is he, have you seen some growth? Can you I, talk I a little bit about him? Neck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he's my pain. Uh, no, what would... Two, two years ago, it was hard uh, to get him just on basketball. You know, he had five or six technical fouls. Uh, I haven't had... In my career, I haven't had players accumulate five. He had five or six in one year, and it was all, it was it was all the noise uh, that surrounded him, and he reacted to that noise. He told me in June that it would be different, and he has been different. And really, uh, he does as much coaching as I do with with the group. And um, you know, look. He graduated from college. He won the Atlanta 10 championship. It's a pretty full plate. Now he's going to the NCAA tournament. Coach, can you talk about the way you guys uh, guarded Weber, who had been tearing up this conference in the, in the tournament, especially with his uh, he averaged eight assists in the first two games. He only had two today, and he only had eight points. Well, well his speed is just phenomenal. And, and look, I, you can do all the campaigning that you want. The national media has already decided that Aaron Kraft is the best defender in the country. Briante Weber is the best defender in the country. He has 120 steals. So they can give the awards to whomever they want, but that kid's the best defender in the country. And I was scared to death of his, of his defense and his presence around the ball. And you're absolutely right. Uh, without Melvin Johnson, like we played and beat a wounded team, uh, and 
Weber was the one coming in. Graham is a magnificent player, an all-league player, but Weber was taking the ball wherever he wanted this whole tournament and the games going into the tournament. And uh, he was, we just tried to keep him in front of us as much as possible and make him take some challenge shots. We did a lot of switching on the perimeter too so that they couldn't turn the corner with, with they had a greater, they had a bigger advantage in foot speed than we would have. Coach, when you came in and gave your opening statement, you said, you know, this was a top five league, you'd get six teams in. Last night, Mike Krzyzewski kind of compared the A-10 to the ACC and said that he didn't know if A-10 teams could handle that schedule. What do you see this week that reinforced, you know, your belief that this is a top five league? And I'm not familiar with whom, who you're referring to. <laughs> Who's the guy? Uh, Mike Krzyzewski from Duke. Oh. Um, <laughs> look, I, I think that, he, here's what I say, and I said the same thing about Wichita State, and I said the same thing about my team in 0304. If we were playing their schedules, we would have different players because we would have greater recruiting advantages. Look, the decisions that are being made, that are already been made, at 6 o'clock tonight are numeric. Who did you play? How did you do? And where do your numbers lay out? For me, a great celebration, though, for the Atlantic 10 tonight was 6. Coach, uh, when, when you play VCU, turnovers happen, but it, but it seems to be the ability to not allow those to steamroll. How did your team keep from having repeated turnovers? Well, to be honest with you, I think we dribbled the ball a lot. We dribbled the ball probably too much at times. And we really didn't get the second pass involved. In watching the tape, one of the things that they were doing uh, a lot of is the pass from the, top, from the wing to the top. They were really denying and jumping at. And uh, today, their press call caused us to have turnovers. In Philadelphia, it was passing and catching. We didn't do a good, good enough job passing and catching. Uh, but I, I just think having really a fourth ball handler in Halil uh, allowed us to, to uh, you know, stem the tide. I think we could have done even a better job with it, but certainly to come out of that game uh, with 12, with the great atmosphere, I, I salute the VCU fans. They, they, were, they were tremendous, and they made it you know, a pseudo, pseudo uh, home game for them. Uh, and we reacted to that, I think, when we got the eight point lead in the first half. We didn't, we didn't handle it as well. Richard? Did you know at halftime they were going to play all the starters for 20 minutes? And did you think they could do it? Well, I thought that in the first half, we, to be honest with you, I have in my notes, and I can show you this, that I wanted to try to get short rest for everybody. And uh, in the first half, the two guys that went in, it was a little bit too much for them. So we were just going to ride it out. We didn't have foul trouble. Uh, you know, like I said yesterday, you had those timeouts for so long. Uh, and and what, they, what the players remarked was that they were playing for a championship. So I had to give them the best chance to win a championship. So just, just for accuracy's sake, because if I get this wrong, my soul is in mortal peril. Did you actually get an audience with His Holiness? No. And, 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 champs, you know? and they, uh, I'm, I'm really disappointed because he's a Jesuit, and we're a Jesuit school. I just thought he would, I, I just figured he would tweet me and, and we would have a chance to meet. Uh, but he didn't. And ironically, ironically, while we were there, he met with the Argentine soccer team. Uh, but I guess. He didn't want to meet another bald-headed Amer uh, Italian-American. I, I don't know. Do you follow him? Who? No, I don't follow anybody. There you go. I shut my Twitter down on December the 8th. That was the day that the world ended in Philadelphia, if you ask our fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else? All right, thank you. Thank you.